takes away all your fear. So, safer, a community safer, a, a less damage to our community. It's a better community, isn't it? And then the community has more money to spend on things like schools, things like education. Any others you can think of before we move on? Yes? Amen. <laughs> and look, it's, it's, it's so true. It's so true. Since I've been taking this course, this class, this whole thing on alcohol, I've realised that I'm not a great example for my children. I drink at home. I don't drink dry. But that's probably about it. I never stop drinking once I start drinking. I'm Australian, I just drink. Well, that's what we do. So I don't show my children that there are limits and I can keep to those limits. So for sure, that you guys can be the best, best example for the next generation. I'm not saying don't take this drug. It's legal. And in one year's time, you're all able to drink it legally and however you want. But is that what you want to do? Set an example for the next generation? I don't want to be, I am so far a bad example for the next generation. And this is my karma. This is me giving back. You know, and not everyone gets that. So you've got that opportunity. Any others you can think of? <coughs> no? No? Yes, sorry.
And they're just as important, if not more important. Yeah? Non-physical factors, mood. Trust me, alcohol, uh, alcohol amplifies your mood. If you've had a bad day at school or flew with your mum or things just aren't going right and then you have a drink that night, you're not going to have much fun on the alcohol. Trust me. After serving it and drinking it for way too long, alcohol amplifies your mood. So if you're in a shitty mood, don't drink. It's just going to make things worse. How quickly are you drinking? Now, the quicker you drink, the more impact it's going to have, yeah? Have I had something to eat? Am I on medication? Am I taking illicit drugs? Because we, I can't stand up here and go, well, no, you do that. You know, they're, they're, they're ripe and rampant in our community. And when you mix illicit drugs with this legal drug called alcohol, that can't only equal disaster, yeah? Yeah, it feels good. I'm not arguing there, but it's the consequences that I'm talking about. And the thing that you don't get, and I didn't get, and I'll explain that a little bit later why, is how much impact it has later in our life. You know, we can wake up with a bad hangover or spew up or, you know, feel rubbish the next day. It's not just the next day that it impacts on us. It's later in our life. Because at this stage of your young careers, you're still developing. You're still developing. What I mean by that is a man's brain does not fully develop till he's 24 and girls are 22. Okay? And that goes for the rest of your body. So if you're shoveling this drug into your body and your brain is still trying to develop, your major organs are still trying to develop, that's only going to hurt them, yeah? And that you'll feel in 15, 20 years. Ready, Mr. Music? So, standard drinks. Important to understand this for a little bit. A standard drink, most of you would have seen when you go into bars, clubs, even when you're with your parents, someone gets a shot of spirits, of bourbon, it goes up on the counter and out comes a shot. Have you seen that? And a shot of bourbon is 30 mils. Okay, that's a standard drink. It's a standard drink because it contains 10 grams of pure alcohol. That's how we work out the standard drinks. So, 60 mils of port, which I hope none of you have ever drunk, is a standard drink because it contains 10 grams of pure alcohol. The next three are very interesting. White wine, red wine, and sparkling wine, or champagne. Each one of those standard drinks is 100 mils. Now, what most of us don't get is in a wine glass, yeah? 100 mils is this much. This much. Which isn't a lot, is it? And that's a standard drink. You fill that wine glass up, which is usually 300 mils, and you scull it, because whatever reason, that's three standard drinks straight down your throat. So be conscious of your standard drinks. And then a pot of, a pot of strength, a 285 mil pot, a full strength beer is a standard drink as well, because it contains 10 grams of pure alcohol. At my age, I was drinking UDL. Yeah? Which is hopefully what, if you are drinking, that's what you're doing. Read the side. See what you're drinking. Know what's going in your mouth. Yeah? Don't just crack the can and shot it. Have an idea what's going down your throat. Because only you can look after yourself. It's not my job. It's not your parents' job. If you want to put a drug in your body, at least know what it's going to do to you. So if you're going to do it, do it smartly. <coughs> This is what our National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia recommends. No more than two standard drinks per day to reduce lifetime risk. Sort of makes sense, doesn't it? No more than four standard drinks on a single occasion. That one took me a while to work out. What that one means for me is once you go past four drinks, then there's a better chance you're going to hurt yourself, harm yourself, be it internally or externally. Do I make sense? Do you understand what I'm saying? Good. If you don't, please let me know. It's not safe at all for under 15 or pregnant women to drink alcohol. Full stop. There's not, there's not a lot to be commented on that. It's not good for under 15 to drink. And if it's not good for under 15 to drink, well, then pregnant women can't because they've got fetuses. So it's not safe for under 15 or pregnant women to drink at all. And 15 to 17 year old drinking, best to lay as long as possible. Easy to say, hey? That's your decision. That's not my decision. I've got a 15-year-old girl, do I want to drink here at 16, 17? Not really. Not really. Not when she understands that her brain can be hurt, her body can be hurt by it. I want her to be smart about it. So I'm not saying don't do it, but once you get all these facts, is this drug something you really want to pound your body with? Or do I want to be smarter about it? Because, let me tell you, even if you start drinking at the age of 24 when your body's fully developed, or 22 in ladies, there's plenty of time between 22, 24 and death to drink alcohol. Heaps and heaps and heaps. So think about it. Think about what you 
do it. But so here's some law because it's important that you have law. You guys need to understand the law to know what you're doing right or wrong. So can minors are minors allowed on a licensed premise? So are you guys allowed to go into a pub or a club? Generally, the answer is no, unless there are six circumstances which means or which allow you to be on a licensed premise. Okay, let's cover them. The first, in the company of a responsible adult. What's responsible? Basically, anyone above the age of 18. Yeah? So I can go into a bar if I'm with the responsible adult or I'm underage. Straightforward. Number two, it's not and, it's or. Or they are having a meal. I was so disappointed when I learned that. I'm a huge fan of chicken parma at a pub. Chicken parma chips and salad is probably the best meal in the world. That line means I'm allowed to do it. Means a 16, 17 year old can walk into a pub, order a meal, sit down and have it. You don't have to be with your parents. You can simply go do that. Does that make sense? For those of you that think, maybe even some of the teachers, that that doesn't sound right or it looks wrong, let me give you perspective. Are children allowed to buy lollies in a milk bar? But they sell cigarettes. Same thing. As long as the child's not purchasing the alcohol, purchasing the lollies, they're allowed to be there. Yeah? I would much rather you go into a, a public bar, have a chicken parma and salad and chips, rather than go to McDonald's and spend 12 bucks on Big Macs. Sounds healthy, doesn't it? They are a resident. So resident means I live there. And look, when I grew up in the 80s and the 90s, or maybe, yeah, right, back then, you used to go country Victorian holidays. You used to go to Warrnambool or Swan Hill, and most of the accommodation was in the local pub. So if I'm staying there, it's not like I have to have sale in and out of windows. If I'm a resident, it makes sense I'm allowed to be there. Yeah? Look, employee duties other than the supply of alcohol. I'm not sure if they're called barbacks anymore, but in nightclubs, when I was working nightclubs, we had barbacks. And what a barback was, was a 16, 17 year old picked up the glasses, stopped the fridge and took out the rubbish. Yeah? They're not supplying alcohol. Therefore, they're allowed to be there if they're employee duties. Is that making sense? Yes? All right. They're in a training program or doing work experience. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? And finally, it's before 11 p.m. and the venue has a restaurant and or a cafe license. So what that last point means is not everyone that works in a restaurant that has a liquor license has to be above 18. You think about the first and second year apprentices. They're usually 16 or 17, aren't they? And they're not exactly going out serving people in the bar, are they? The dishing, who's washing all the dishes? They're not supplying alcohol. If you're not supplying alcohol in a restaurant situation, you are allowed to be underage. Does that make sense? All right, before I go to the next slide, let me ask you a question. Can minors, can you lot, legally drink in a pub? No. no. Simple? Pretty Mr. Music. All right, let's have a look at this, because this is really interesting. Now let me tell you too, and to the teachers in the room, this isn't new. This law has been about since alcohol was made legal. So we haven't updated this, this is since the day gone. So, can licensees supply liquor to minors? No, unless, unless you are partaking in a meal with a spouse, parent, or guardian. Okay? We'll come back to that in a minute. Minors are employed to deliver package liquor to a person over 18 years of age. That one's really simple. Now it's got a four stage for the weekend that you can't carry into the car. So the trolley boy can help get into the car, yeah? That's that point. There are fines that go with this, and there are fines for everything. So let's have a look at these fines. So the licensee is someone who holds a liquor license on the establishment. To drive a car, you need a driver's license. To serve alcohol, you need a liquor license. Everyone okay with that? So if the licensee is found to be supplying minor with alcohol, not in these circumstances, they can get fined $8,662. It's a big fine, isn't it? That's per child. Employee, if I'm serving you behind the bar and you come up to me and I serve you and we're found out to be serving, I, oh, as a bar attendant, get fined $1,444, which is a lot of money for someone working casually behind the bar. Trust me. The other person can also get fined $8,662. Who do you reckon the other person is? The person over 18 buying it for you. You've got to think about that. That opens up a whole conversation in itself. I grew up to secure so, 16, 17, I would go down Anthony Street, I would wait outside the bar, one of the traders would come out, I'd go, mate, 20 bucks, can you get me half a dozen beers? You 
Gerne, vi har en første vise, og det er sådan, at de tager til sin kjøb der, det tager de kun gardens, og de drikker mere vin. Det er helt usædvanligt, at vi giver mere alkohol, 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 helt usædvanligt, at vi giver mere alkohol Police turn up, and these kids have been drinking. They don't have to be drunk, drinking. I can get fined $8,000, $662 per child. Per child. Now, some people have said to me before, oh, but I can get a note from mum. Yeah? Doesn't that sound silly? Mum said I could drink alcohol, here's my note. <laughs> you know, come on now. Not acceptable. So you need to be conscious of that. If you're thinking about, oh, it's all right to drink at mum's house, does mum know the law? And are the police going to enforce this $8,000 fine? And let's be honest, my parents couldn't afford it. Most of our parents can't afford a fine like that. So we need to be responsible. Let's go back to that first point. Partaking in a meal with a spouse, parent, or guardian. Has to be a sit down meal. Yeah, knife and fork. I can't leave a fork full of food and drink for six hours. Yeah, ah, uh -uh, haven't finished yet. All right, it's only during time I'm consuming my meal, which generally it's, it equates to one, maybe a second drink. Yes? So, hey, we're aware that that was the law. What do we think of that? Is it good? Is it bad? Anyone have an opinion? Yes? Yeah, if those who can't hear, the young man's saying, it gives you a chance to be aware, which is really important. Anyone else? No? I think it's really important, personally. And I'll say this to everyone in the room, including the teachers and the adults. I think this is really important. I believe it's my responsibility as a parent to educate my child. I can do that at home, and that's easy. But we all know being at home, safe, and being out in public, even with our parents, we act differently. Fair? Yep, good. So it's important for me that I can take my child out at 17, give her a meal, an A beverage, an alcoholic beverage, and get an idea of how she's going to act out in public. Do I have to be sitting up all night worried that my daughter's going to be crazy drunk? You know, and think of the alternative. Some people say, oh, it's not the best perception. You know, he's had a really good look to encourage alcohol. The stats show us, and we all know, Australians drink alcohol. I couldn't, I've been teaching this for nine or 10 years, and most people, if you, if you think of their five best friends, at least four out of five can drink alcohol. And most of the time it's five. All right? This gives me, as a parent, a chance to educate my child. Because you know what the alternative is? What are you doing now? Get to 18, out with a group of mates, peer group pressure, skull, 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 skull. Yeah? That's not the way to start your alcohol journey. Yeah? It's a really, really silly way to do it. And as a parent, I cringe. I cringe. So I did that. That was me. I'm not saying I didn't do that. That's exactly what I did. But I reckon I would have much preferred mum and dad give me a bit of education. I don't think, I, would, I still would have drunk, but I would have been smarter about it. I would have known some facts. It wouldn't have been just, you're too young, don't drink alcohol. Because that's not what it's about. It's about giving you the tools to make your own decision. And not just all my friends are doing it, so I better do it. Do I want to inflict that pain on my body? Because it's fun, but there are consequences. Any questions on that? Any comments? <coughs> right, next please. <laughs> yeah, we all know that one, don't we? She's a treasure. Lindy Lyon. Teens need to understand the cause and effect principle. Alcohol is the cause of damage to the brain and beauty, now and for the future. And that's what I was talking about with myself before. There are, my family, not the healthiest bunch in the world. And at the age of 60 plus, there are definite heart condition problems in my family. Cool, I knew that from the get-go, but I was young, I didn't care. And I'll be honest, I wasn't that bad. I, I drank with reckless abandon, all right? And what I mean by reckless abandon, I was a national cocktail champion. You saw something might have seen me climb up a bottle. National cocktail champion, which meant I had reps dropping alcohol from my house every week. Two or three bottles of alcohol every week would be dropped off to my house. And we would drink them. Don't all the time. And every now and then I used to think about it. Oh, well, 
If I'm going to have a heart attack, I'll get some. I'll drink as hard as I can now and I'll worry about the consequences later. Yeah? Because bugger it. I'm bulletproof. I'm, you know, I'm young. I'm a teenager. Two days before my 42nd birthday, I had a massive heart attack. Which on average, about 25 years younger than anyone else in my family. And I'm fit and healthy. Yeah? So, are there consequences down the track? Oh, yeah, probably. And I think about that. Was that, was, was that stupid, reckless drinking and smoking cause of my early heart attack? Yeah, probably. Probably. Would I have changed things? Marginally. I would have done it smarter. You know, that's what I would have done. I, I'm not going to stand here and tell you I wouldn't have drunk. I can't do that. That's just ridiculous. And then you just look, not listen to me. So I did. I did drink. But I would have been smarter about it. And then maybe instead of having a heart attack before my birthday, I might have been 60, and in 20 years' time, that technology might mean I didn't have to worry about having a heart attack. Yeah? So are there cause and effect? Definitely. You know, it's all very well to wake up the next day and you feel good. You go, yeah, right? Me and alcohol, my friend. I can do that again, no worries. It's not just the hangover that's going to hurt. It's the repercussions later in your life. You're damaging your brain. You're damaging your liver. In my case, I was damaging my heart. Yeah? So be conscious. Think about what you're doing. Ready, Mr. Neal? Alcohol and teens. Let me read to you. It's illegal for anyone to drink alcohol if they're under the age of 18. We all know that. We all get that. If most of you are drunk alcohol, you knew you were doing, you're not allowed to, but you do. So we get that. The body also does cope with alcohol when people are younger because their brain, heart, liver aren't fully developed enough to process it. This means it can seriously damage their health. Yeah? And that's what I want to get across. Just be conscious of what this drug can do you. Any elk fighters? Do you actually understand how long it takes for alcohol to get out of your system? Yeah? No? Alright, let me explain it to you. And a guess, how long do we think the standard drink takes to exit my system? Yep. One hour. So one standard drink, one pot of beer, this much wine, one bourbon and coke, takes my body an hour to get rid of it. And you know how it gets rid of it? 90% of the alcohol is flushed out through my healthy, functioning liver. Okay? Water hydrates me, coffee makes me feel better, greasy food might make me feel better as well. But none of them have an impact on getting rid of the alcohol. So let's go out for Friday night, yeah? You go out at 10 o'clock, drink till about 4 in the morning, is that what you do? I'm old, I don't go out anymore. And let's think about it. Let's have three standard drinks per hour, which is one full glass of wine. So at the end of that six hours, I've had 18 standard drinks, which means I'm not going to be zero, zero till 10 o'clock the next night. Yeah? So you L players think about that, because if you're going for a lesson, or you're in the car with mum and you've got an L, you've got to be zero, zero. So don't confuse being hungover and still having alcohol in your system. Make sense? Excellent. Alcohol accounts for 13% of all deaths among 14 to 17 year olds in Australia. In fact, about one Australian teenager dies and more than 60 are hospitalised every week from alcohol related harm. Just suck that in a minute. Every week, one of you die because of alcohol. And 60 are put in hospital with alcohol poisoning, needing your stomach pump, etc., etc. Anyone been unlucky enough to be a stat not the death? But anyone been taken to hospital because you were just a little bit silly with alcohol? Good, keep it that way. Don't. Don't be a stat. Some useful tips for dealing with teenage and drinking include. Setting a good example in your own consumption of alcohol. And that's just not a parents thing, that's a you as well. Because you know what it's like with your friends. There's always leaders and followers. There's always alphas and beta and people that want to follow those alphas. I want to do what that person does, they're cool. Yeah? So I want to do what the cool people do. Set a good example if you're one of the cool people, if you feel the need to do it. You know, make sure you're doing the right thing. Talking to your teenagers about alcohol laws and potential consequences for breaking them. Talking to your parents. The concept from here is in a newsletter, we'll send home a letter. We'll take a page of your newsletter and we'll give your parents some hints and tips about what they can do better. You know? At the end of this class, when you go back to your class, you'll be given a little wallet-sized bit of card, and it gives you some hints and tips. You know, don't get into a shower. You know what? That suits the quickest drinker only. Buy your own drinks. 
Set yourself limits. Yeah? Look after yourself. Think about what you're doing. Oh. Next person that falls asleep, I get a, a whiteboard marker and I put what time to fall asleep on the floor. We'll stay there for days. Alright? So go home and talk to your parents about it. Are we good? Yeah. <laughs> Engage conversation. And if you open up the lines of communication with your parents, all of, all of a sudden, and straight away from your parents' point of view, my child is becoming responsible. I am trusting my child more because they want to talk to me about this drug rather than just, no, I don't know about it, don't care. I'm not doing it, Mum. No, wait, not me. Just going for a sleepover at a friend's place. Been there, done that. Talk to them. Rewarding good behaviour for showing a responsible attitude towards alcohol. That's what you want, isn't it? You want to be treated like an adult. So if you act responsibly, then your parents can treat you like an adult, which is what we all want. We want to be treated like adults because we're getting there. Talking to your teenager or your parents about how to deal with peer pressure related to alcohol or binge drinking. That's the biggest choice, that's the biggest hurdle you have. But all my friends are doing it. And they will, they'll say, go on, don't be scared, don't be a wuss. Go on, have a drink. Yes? That's what, that's when you need to step up to the plate. That's when you need to be brave. Next, please. Keep an eye on what you're drinking and set limits for yourself. And stick to them. Yeah? Don't be sucked into what other people are doing because they are doing it. If you only want to do A, B or C, do it. Yeah? Be strong within yourself and set yourself limits. I'll be honest, that's one of the, been one of the hardest things I've had to do as an example set to my kids, <coughs> setting limits on what I drink. So I never did that. I drank until I didn't want to drink anymore or until I fell over. All right, I've fallen over now, I can't drink anymore. Yeah? Now, I set myself limits. Yeah, all right, I'm going to stop after four drinks and see how I go. And last week I went to the races and I didn't drink at all. I'm really impressed. It's the first time in 20 years I've done it. But I've set myself limits and I've actually achieved them. And it doesn't matter if your age, my age, or 90. If you achieve a goal, you feel good about yourself. Don't have to say it out loud, but we all do. Start with non alcoholic drinks, and alternate them with alcoholic drinks. Or try drinks with lower alcohol content. You know, if you're going to do it, and most of you said you have, or half to three quarters, be smart about it. Be smart about it. Don't just drink to get blind drunk. Yeah? Alcohol can be fun when you do it smartly. And that's how you do it, why you do it, and when you do it. They're the things to think about. Eat before or while you were drinking. And it's not just eating. Eating's good because it distracts you from drinking. Drink plenty of water. Water doesn't do anything for the alcohol. What it does is it hydrates your brain. There is a level of fluid around your brain that is dehydrated as you drink alcohol. Thus the hangover, thus the pounding head. Yeah? So things like this can help your body with recovery. So if you're going to do it, once again, do it smart. Yeah? Please. Don't drink and drive. Well, do it. Especially you L players. You've got to be so conscious. You're on zero to zero. And look, it's just not worth it. Who wants to drive on drugs? Don't put your hands up. If you're going out in a group, work out who will drive. Everyone home. If no one wants to be a nominated driver, Bring enough money for a cab. Think about the end of the night. If that involves including your parents, do so. Trust me, as a parent, if my child's going out to a party and they may be up to a bit of skullduggery or mischief or whatever you want to call it, I'd rather know than not know. You know, I'd much rather know. So then my child feels comfortable enough to ring me up and say, Dad, things have got a bit out of hand or Dad, can you come get me? And I'll get up and get them. And there won't be any repercussions because we've had that conversation. It's not just like getting a car and you're in a heap of trouble. You know, that's when you don't tell me about it. That's when all of a sudden the police or someone's parent or some, one of you have to call someone's parents because they're spewing in your gut and you can't pick them up. You know, that hits the parents with surprise, which turns to anger. Open the communication lines. Explain to them what you're going to do. Be brave. You know, you're 17, so if, you, if you're old enough and brave enough to drink alcohol, be old enough and brave enough to talk to your parents about it. So they can feel safe, that they know what you're doing. Because that's all we want, to feel safe. Understand your blood alcohol will continue to rise after the consumption of your last drink. Your body takes a while to process it. You generally want to reach your maximum big blood alcohol concentration until about 45 minutes to 90 minutes after you've stopped taking this drug. Yeah? 
So you L platters, once again, think about what you're doing, how you're doing it. And that's what I'm talking about, they vote. I'll be honest, I'm a mad reality fan of TV and I love Biggest Loser, all right? Especially the American version. And it was Gillian that taught me about being brave. Being brave is stepping towards something that you're not comfortable doing. Being brave is saying no when everyone else is saying yes. Being brave is listening to yourself. And that's all this is. Don't, don't fall into peer group pressure because I'll have to do it. You know, don't be a wuss. Look after yourself. Be, you know, in the morning, get up in the mirror, look in the mirror and go, yes, I looked after myself. Good job. Yeah, and we, we have a chuckle, but most of us won't. Oh, right, it doesn't taste very good, but they're all doing it, I better do it. Yeah? Be brave. Step towards something that you're not comfortable doing and you know it's the right thing. Does that make sense? So your future and your happiness lies in responsible decision making. And you've already started. With, in conjunction with your parents, you choose your electives. You know, by now some of you are starting to decide what career path you want to go off on. Do I want to do this or do I want to start studying this? Do I want to go to university? Am I looking at a trade? You know, you're starting to be involved in your decisions for your life. This is another one of them. Instead of walking out of here and just going, at least next time you decide to take that drug called alcohol, you'll understand what you're doing. Yeah? You'll understand the consequences you can be inflicting on your body. Yeah, this isn't pin the tail on the donkey. You're not hurting someone else. You're hurting yourself. Please. That's it. Any questions? Any comments? So look, when you get back to class, your teachers are going to have some wallet-sized cards for you to take home. And put them in your wallet. Have a look at them. You know, if you've got any feedback, please give it to your teachers or your parents. I'm back next week to do the year 10s. Good luck with that. <laughs> So if you have any questions between now and then, write them down. Speak to your coordinator and I'm happy to address them. Yeah? So today I say thank you for listening. Have a good day, yeah?
out with a group of mates, 150 bucks later, spilling in the gutter, yes, I'm doing that again next week. Yeah, and a couple of chuckles says, yes, we've already been there. All right, without teachers looking, without teachers looking, so this is like one of those doctors, patients confidentiality, just a gentle raise of your hand if you actually have tasted alcohol. All right, did you notice the proud ones? The proud ones are like this. Okay, all right, excellent. So some of you have had an experience, some of you haven't. Some might have seen people that have been drinking, yeah? So what I'm going to teach you about today is about alcohol. First thing I want to ask you before we get going, who in our community gets to distribute drugs? Hands up, so I don't have a shout out. Who in our community legally, legally gets to distribute drugs? Yeah. Doctors. So doctors, pharmacists, supermarkets. Yeah, hands up that way, the list of guys. Psychiatrists. Psychiatrists. So basically most people in the medical profession and every bar attendant and person that serves alcohol. The first thing you need to understand about alcohol it is a drug, yeah? Legal, but a drug. And it's one of the bad drugs because it's a man-made drug. So the first thing you need to start thinking about when you're looking at alcohol and going, yes, 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 is do I want to take this drug, right? And I'm not here today to say, don't take the drug. Don't do it. Don't drink alcohol because I was 17 too. And I was drinking alcohol at 17 too. Not proud of it, but I was. But the difference between you and me is I'm going to give you some education. So I think at your age, 17 turning 18, you're a young adult. And you want to be treated like a adult. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the tools to decide if that's what you want to do. Do I want to impact on my body with this drug called alcohol? Yeah? So I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying be smart about it. When you do it, how you do it, why you do it. They're the things that we're going to talk about today. So let's have a bit of a look. Modern technology. I can keep talking forever, but technology doesn't work. All right, here we go. Teens have a powerful... Teens have the power to make decisions that affect the rest of their life. Alcohol, driving, sex, education, even partners, and then work. You're at that cusp, guys. Learn to be better decision makers so you keep you and your mates safe. And that's all I'm after. I'm not telling you not to do what we did. I'm not saying you be angels. I'm saying be smarter about it. Look after your friends. Look after yourself. Things that we're going to discuss today. We're going to learn about facts and alcohol. Okay? Really important we discuss those. We'll have a conversation about alcohol. Give some tips for you and your parents about how to best go about this drug called alcohol. Because I'll be honest, my parents didn't say anything to me. Don't do it. Sorry, that's what they said. And I want to make sure that you and my children get a better education. Because you're young adults. You're doing exams, aren't you? Yeah, no one says you've got a choice in that. You've got a choice in this. So I want to give you the education and the tools so you can make that decision yourself. And, and responsibilities for house parties. You're getting to that age where you're having friends over, you're drinking alcohol. I want you to understand the rules and the regulation, more specifically the law that goes with house parties. Because it's really important that you understand that, okay? <coughs> if you haven't been there, you will. If you continue to take this drug, which a lot of you probably will, this is how you can end up. And I'm not saying I haven't ended up like that. Trust me. Yep. I have definitely ended up like that. And we've seen this on the news all the time. Yeah? People get sillyly drunk and then they're needing ambulance help, they're needing etc, etc. And we'll cover the impact of this drug plays on you and our community. Please. Alright, this is a really important one. This is what brings it home for me. This is why you're here. At any stage you do not want to be part of these stats, contributing or being a statistic. So how does alcohol affect Victorians every year? Let's have a look. So there are over 24,714 inpatients hospitalised every year just in Victoria because of alcohol. Do we know the Frankston Hospital? The big one in Frankston? That's a big hospital. That holds approximately 1,000 beds, yeah? And every year there are 8,000 emergency admissions because of alcohol. Think of the impact that has on the health system. So any time you've been to the uh, emergency department, you're waiting three to six hours, yeah? 
And that's specifically because of this drug called alcohol. 8,000 emergency emissions every year. We hear it on the news all the time. Nurses don't get paid enough. There's not enough paramedics. Doctors are under strain. Well, look, 24,000, 8,000. There's 32,000 straight away people that are demanding our health system do better because they've hurt themselves because of this drug called alcohol. 64% of 18 to 24 year olds binge drink. And a staggering 32%. So three out of 10 of each of you are binge drinking. And what that sentence probably doesn't say is binge drinking every week. Yeah? Does everyone understand what binge drinking is? It's guzzling. Yeah? It's not drinking to enjoy, it's drinking to get pissed. Sorry, drunk. Yeah? And that's what Australians do. We have a bad culture of drinking. We don't drink to enjoy, we drink to get really, really drunk. And unfortunately, your generation, your generation of culture even worse. Because when you go out for a drink in, in, in the public, it's so expensive. It's so expensive. So a lot of kids are now staying at home and getting blind drunk before they go out. Yeah? Don't be part of that stat. You know, that's what the rest of the nation of fools is doing. Binge drinking. Drink to enjoy, not to get blind drunk. There are 759 alcohol-related deaths every year because of alcohol. There are 57 road deaths every year because of alcohol. Someone once said to me, oh, 57 isn't too bad, is it? Well, one's too bad. But think of the ripple effect. Dad's walking across the road to get milk and bread for the three kids. Bang! Some drunk runs him over. Think about how they, that they then have to survive without Dad and how that affects their family and their family and their family again. Yeah? Well, so does make sense? There are another 13,000 seeking treatment for alcohol problems. So now we're up to 40 plus thousand people demanding that our health system look after them. All because they're taking this drug called alcohol. And trust me, a percentage of this room will be in those categories. Yeah? Because you think about it, you put your hand up, yep, I did. You started drinking at 16 or 17. Now, it might seem a long time away, yes, one second. It might seem a long time away, but when you're 36, you'll have drunk for 20 years of your 36 years life. And it's a drug you've taken for over 20 years. It's a scary stat, yes. <laughs> so, think about this drug. Now these two next stats, they're provided by the government, but I think I'll highlight to you how they're probably a lot inaccurate, <coughs> right? Not quite right. There are approximately 2,000 assaults involving young people affected by alcohol every year in Victoria. There are over 1,500 assaults in licensed premises every year in Victoria. You know how they get these stats? There's a fight, okay? Or a scuffle or whatever. Friends will generally break up those fights, yeah? But the friends can't break it up. So security get involved, which take care of the rest of the fights, don't they? So security take care of that. These stats are brought about by when police turn up and take someone away and establish the fact that they were alcohol related. Now you think about it. 2,000 assaults involving young people. Is that on a weekly basis or a yearly basis? You know, so these stats don't indicate the true effect. I would say there's probably 200,000 200, assaults involving young people in alcohol every year, just in Victoria. And you would have seen it, guys. I remember my 16, 17, 18 year olds, we get really drunk and then there's fights. And it's no fun and you don't want to be part of it, but you're drunk. And these drugs take it over your body and you've lost your inhibitions and it's on. Don't be part of these stats. 37% of parents with children entering foster care have alcohol abuse problems. More impact on the health system. I can relate to this last one. My sister-in-law took guardianship of Eden, my niece, and her mum, at the age of 15, died in hospital of 33 of alcohol-related situations. And you think, oh, well, the poor kid, you know, that's awful. That's not awful, it's the stories that you hear from people. And she doesn't talk about it too often because it's hard. You talk, she talks about this eight-year-old girl who has to steal off her mum money so her and her brother can eat before mum drinks it all. That, that's disgusting, isn't it? Eight-year-olds shouldn't have to steal off their mum to eat. Eight-year-olds shouldn't have to steal off their mum to clothe themselves and their brother. So, alcohol's great fun and it's all that, but don't be part of these stats. You know, don't dare be educated and then be part of these stats. That just highlights a real silliness. Any questions or comments on those stats? No? Right, please. Then if it's, all right, here we go, let's do one together. Let's work together. So, think about this. How do you as a teenager, your parents as an adult, how does the community benefit 
from us responsibly consuming alcohol. So we'll start with you lot. Hands in the air if you've got an answer. As a teenager, how do you benefit if you responsibly consume alcohol? I want to engage with when you're at school. Work with me. All right, it can save my life. Thank you. I'm left-handed and I can't spell. So if something doesn't make sense, say so. Save my life. Which has got to be the biggest and most important reason, doesn't it? What else? Anyone else? All right, let me do another one. It's safer. Yes? Come on, guys, I've been the I've done the drinking. Why do you think it's better for you to consume it responsibly than, than stupidly? Sorry? No, just talking to each other. All right, I'll keep going. Less damage, yes? Uh, more enjoyable. What's more enjoyable? You remember the night. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. And, and we all chuckle, but it's true. You know, it's not just this drug that can hurt us. What happens if you're really blind drunk and all of a sudden you sleep with someone? Is that what we do at this age? And all of a sudden you've got your girlfriend or some stranger pregnant. Yeah. Or worse yet, they give you some form of STD. Personal experience or just a great <laughs> Child, if you're out with a group of people that are drinking, we the parents worry. If you're our kids, you're our babies. We want you to be safe. So, yeah, that's a really good point. Any others you can think of from a parent's point of view? Yes? Um, that's, that is a brilliant point. You all want it. Every teenager wants it. Why don't you treat me more like an adult? Why do you always treat me like a child? Yeah? We all hear that from our parents. We all say to our parents, we want to be treated like adults. You're 17, you're on the cusp. At 18, you can legally drink. At 18, you can drive a car. So, we want that trust off our parents. And how do we get that trust? We earn it. And that's a really good point. If our parents trust us, they're going to be a lot more comfortable with us going out. They're going to be a lot more safer. If you talk to them about it, open the lines of communication, they're going to have a lot more time to be able to discuss that with you. Can you think of any others? Yes. Yeah, there we go. All right, what I'm going to put here is less first overhead. So what I mean by less first overhead is exactly that. Less waiting time in emergency. Less road deaths. Less assaults. Less illness. Less impact on the hospital system. 
You know, and look, I'll be honest, all those things that you're not really thinking about at the moment, fair enough, you're 17. But they're the things when you drink this drug that you need to be conscious of. You know, it's all very well to harm yourself if you want to do that, but why should you harm others? You know, that's not the idea. So the less, less the first overhead. How else does the community benefit? Yep? Like damage stability. Yeah, for sure. And look, we've all done it. Maybe you haven't, but I have. I grew up in St Kilda, and I used to go to the palace, straight up Carlisle Street to get home, and I'd always end up playing with two or three somethings out of somebody's garden. <laughs> well, you did, you were blind drunk, and eh, I'll have that in a minute. You know, and as a community, you don't need that. You know, so that's a really good point. Less damage to the surrounding area. It's safer. You know? I want to go out late at night in the community. I don't want to have to worry about, oh my God, they're really drunk and let's keep away from them. Because really drunk means anything can happen. The first thing you lose when you drink this drug called alcohol are your inhibitions. Yeah? They call them beer goggles. Everything gets a lot better. She's a lot prettier. I'm happy to dance now. Yeah? That's what this drug does. It